Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy Delia. More than 5 million Americans suffer from Alzheimer's disease and dementia. A new documentary feature film, Alive Inside, a story of music and memory, tells the story of a man who discovers that songs embedded deep inside of memory can help awaken the minds of those struggling with these disorders. I'm here at the Institute for Music and Neurologic Function in Bronx, New York, with one of the world's leading experts in the relationship between music and memory, Dr. Connie Tomeno. Dr. Tomeno, what allows music to awaken a person who is clearly lost to dementia? Well, you know, music is a very complex stimulus. It affects us uh, emotionally. It uh, engages our long-term memories and feelings about places and people throughout our lives. From the moment we're born, we start to associate sounds and feelings with people and events in our lives. And music plays a very strong role in incorporating those feelings, those emotions, those memories um, with people and with music. So much so that when somebody starts to lose their memory to dementia, we can tap in to those memories by selecting music that's personally important to that individual. Can the participation in music therapy delay dementia? Well, there's not really a cure for dementia, as we all know. But when we think about how music excites certain components of memory and recall, we can see how engaging the person in music-based activities um, can engage the very mechanisms of memory that may be declining because of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Aspects such as attention, um, recall, associations, those aspects can all be cued very directly through music. And music therapists are trained on how to really specifically pick up those components of, of music to excite and engage a person with dementia. In the study that we uh, did back in 1993, we were funded through the uh, New York State Department of Health, we actually looked at engaging people in music-based reminiscence programs over the course of 10 months and were surprised, um, rightly so, that, that music engaging people with these types of music recall activities that over the course of 10 months, their memory actually improved over time. So we think of dementia as being a progressive disease, which it is, but we know that engaging the person in meaningful attention-based tasks and reminiscence tasks can indeed delay the um, advancement of the disease. Does listening to music alone, independent of human contact, offer any therapeutic effects? Because music in and of itself it can elicit very strong emotions and memories, you can see how music alone can have therapeutic benefit to people with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. But precisely because it has such strong connections to emotions and memories, it can be a little dangerous as well. Um, we know that people um, can have both positive as well as very strong negative responses to music. So we want to be careful to observe how the person is responding to that music and to be present with them to see how that's happening. Uh, engaging the person with a music therapist who's trained to um, really identify where the responses are coming from, how the person is connecting to the music, is there an aspect of music, of memory, that's being um, tapped into, is there an aspect of attention and feelings, both positive and negative, the music therapist will then use those responses in a very constructive way, a very directive way, to allow the person to get to the next level of responsiveness, to engage them further, so that uh, they could enhance their quality of life and their ability to be engaged in the world around them. Can you share some ideas on selecting the right music? Sure. As I, as I mentioned, um, music and memory is very strongly connected. And so when we think about the person we want to help uh, with music, we should think about music that was popular when they were young, 
uh, songs. Uh, we know that songs that were popular in uh, when someone was in their late teens to early 20s are the types of songs that people have the strongest connections to. It's reflective of the time of life when we're finding out who we are, um, what our connections to other people are. Also think about uh, songs that have importance to that person with their family, uh, the person's wedding songs, songs that you would sing at parties and holidays, songs that may have religious significance, songs that are reflective of trips and vacations that you may have had. All of, all of those types of songs do carry with them the memories of those events that you experience together. So that's the first step. Another, another um, helpful idea is to look at websites such as uh, the Institute site where there are suggestions on how to find the right music for the person that you want to help through uh, therapeutic music listening. How can people learn more about the subject of music and dementia and the other work being conducted by the Institute? People can learn more about the work uh, in music and dementia as well as uh, the work of the Institute for Music and Neurologic Function by visiting our website, which is musictherapy.imnf.org. Our pages are full of information about the programs we have, as well as research that we've done over the years. There's also other websites that can be extremely helpful uh, to people who want to learn more about the field of music therapy. And they should go to um, musictherapy.org, which is the American Music Therapy Association, as well as cbmt.org, which is the certification board for music therapy.